Hello everyone, in this lesson we will be talking about sources of ancient Indian history. So let's get started. All historical interpretations are ultimately based on evidence derived from sources of history. Conventionally, the sources of history are divided into two categories, literary and archaeological. From a historian's point of view, literary sources include all texts, long or short, written or oral, and archaeological sources include all tangible material remains. Vedas, Vedangas, epics like Mahabharata, Ramayan, Puranas, Dharam Sutras, Smritis, Tripitaka, Jaina Canon, Sangam text, Tamil epics, all they fall under the category of literary sources, while material remains like coins, pottery, monuments, sculptures fall under the category of archaeological sources. Here one point should be noted that certain kind of archaeological sources which have writings on them such as inscription, coins and inscribed images can be considered both material objects and text. Before diving deeper into archaeological sources, let's try to understand what archaeology is. Archaeology is defined as the scientific study of past human lives and activities with the help of material objects which include artifacts, architecture, biofacts and cultural landscape. Archaeology helps in learning about prehistoric societies where there are no written records for historians to study and which makes up over 99% of total human history. The discipline involves surveillance, excavation and eventually analysis of data collected which helps to learn more about the past. Mainly, archaeology relies on cross-disciplinary research. It draws upon anthropology, history, art history, classics, ethnology, geography, geology, paleoecology, paleontology, paleobotany and like subjects. The study of antiquities was initiated by William Jones who founded the Asiatic Society of Bengal in 1774. A large number of ancient inscriptions were collected but those could not be deciphered on account of ignorance of script. The greatest contribution was made in by Governor Cunningham who was appointed as the archaeological surveyor to the government in 1862. He collected a large number of Indian coins and digging was also started at places like Bodh Gaya, Barud, Sachi, Saranath, Takshila by Governor Cunningham. Afterwards, Lord Curzon set up a separate department of archaeology and appointed Dr. Marshall as the Director General Archaeology. The ancient site of Takshila covering an area about 25 square miles was excavated under the supervision of Dr. Marshall and a lot of information was collected from the site. Then Dr. Spooner excavated the ancient site of Patliputra but much information could not be found on account of water logging. He also started the excavation of Buddhist sites of Nalanda University and secured a lot of material within the next two decades. In 1922-23, R.D. Banerjee started the work of excavation at Mohanjodaro in Sindh. Sir John Marshall worked at Harappa and the information got from Harappa and Mohanjodaro was collected together by him and was noted down in his monumental work on the Indus Valley Civilization. A lot of work in the archaeology was done by Oral Steen in Baluchistan, Kashmir and Chinese Turkestan. And G. Majumdar and Dr. Mackey also made their contribution to our knowledge of the Indus Valley Civilization. Epigraphy. Epigraphy is defined as the study of inscription on pillars, rocks, temple walls, copper plates and other writing material. It serves as primary documentary evidence to establish legal, sociocultural, literary, archaeological and historical antiquity on the basis of engravings. 
an inscription is any writing that is engraved on something such as stone wood metal ivory plate bronze statue brick clay shells pottery etc epigraphy includes deciphering the text of inscriptions and analyzing the information they contain it also includes paleography that is the study of ancient writing in this picture you can see some engravings on a rock this picture represents tamil inscription from mangalam which dates back to 2nd century bce the oldest inscription in the indian subcontinent are in the yet undeciphered harappan script the oldest deciphered inscriptions belong to the late 4th century bce and are in brahmi and kharotsky these include those of maurya emperor ashoka which are in a number of different languages and scripts but mostly in prakrit language and brahmi script on the basis of content of inscription they can be grouped under the following heads commercial votive administrative eulogistic religious magical donative commemorative and literary now let's try to understand what commercial inscriptions were the specimens of commercial inscriptions can be found on the seals of the indus valley civilization some of these seals may have been used for stamping of bills of merchandise the possibility is that the shorter inscriptions were simply the owner's name and longer inscriptions included the titles of the owner of the seal these seals may have been used by seafaring traders engaged in foreign trade it seems that nigmas and shrenis which were commercial organization had the power of minting their coins must have possessed seals to be used for commercial purposes there are references to the usage of seals for commercial purposes in other inscriptions such as the mandasor stone inscription of the time of kumar gupta and bandhu varman in this picture you can see mandasor duplicate pillar inscription of yashodharman magical inscriptions some specimens of magical inscriptions can be found in the indus or harappan seals These seals were used as amulets and contained magical formula on them. These amulets contained the name of deities which were represented by the animals. The animals represented on the amulets were the antelope, buffalo, brahmi bull, composite animal, tiger, goat, hare, monkey, short-horned bull and elephant. some of the deities represented on these seals were moon yama shiva indra brahma and durga in this picture you can see amulets which were found from the sites of indus valley civilization religious inscription religious and didactic inscription deal with moral and religious matters possibly some of the seals and tablets of indus valley civilization were objects of worship and were not used as amulets the inscriptions of ashoka are the best specimen of religious and didactic inscriptions administrative inscription ashoka's edicts are the specimen of the administrative inscription The Sahagora copper plate inscription of the 3rd century BC is an example of pure administrative inscription. The Junagadh rock inscription of Rudra Daman I also contains administrative material. Another example of administrative inscription is Banskhera copper plate inscription. In this pictures you can see Junagadh rock inscription of Rudradaman I. Thank you for watching this lesson. We will continue with other type of inscriptions and rest of sources of ancient Indian history in the next lesson. Like, share this video and subscribe to our channel.